So one of my close friends is an ornithophile. Do you know what this means? It means a person who loves birds. So my friend is an avid bird watcher. So what she does is that she spends a lot of time standing on her balcony or on her terrace of her house using binoculars to bird watch. One thing that she has noticed and she has even told me is that if she is observing from her balcony or her terrace, she sees around two to three species of birds. But in contrast, when she goes to a park that is slightly far away from her house, she sees around three to four species of birds. At the same time, when she is visiting a huge lake that is far away from her house, how many species do you think she would have noticed? Well, if we go by the trend here, where you are observing two to three species from your balcony, three to four species from a park slightly away from the house, if you go to a lake, it makes sense that the number of species my friend would have observed in the lake would be much higher than three to four species, right? Around seven to eight species maybe or even more than that. What does this tell us? What does this increasing number of species tell us? It tells us that as the area is increasing, the number of species that are being observed or recorded in that area, that is also increasing. That is what is given by the species area relationships, which is what we're going to talk about in this video. So here we're going to be talking about species richness, which means you're taking one type of organism like a bird or something, and then you're counting the number of species of birds that you can see in an area. And as you increase the area, how many more number species of this type of organism can you find? That tells us the species richness. This is quite different from species diversity. We spoke about species diversity when we spoke more about the types of biodiversity, remember? So in this video, we'll focus on the species richness. So we can plot this in the form of a graph, basically the relationship between area and species richness. So when we do that, we get this kind of a graph, a curve on the arithmetic scale. So on the x-axis, you're going to have the area in kilometer square or whatever unit you would like. And on the y-axis, you're going to have the species richness or the number of species. So if we take species richness as S and area as A, we can see that species richness S is directly proportional to A, which means that as the area is increasing, the species richness is going to increase. But think about this. What would happen if we were to extend the x-axis, extend the area all up to infinity? Do you think the number of species, do you think the species richness would keep increasing, increasing, increasing all up to infinity? That's not what we observe, right? We don't see an infinite number of species occupying infinite area. What this graph tells us is that after a certain area, the species richness or the number of species becomes constant. You can see here that the curve initially was curved, but now it has become a straight line, which means that no matter how much there is an increase in area, the species richness is not going to increase or even decrease. It's going to become constant. So let's come back to this proportionality equation. S is directly proportional to A. As you know, if you want to remove this proportionality sign, you need to bring in a constant, which in this case is going to be C. So this equation, this proportionality equation now becomes S is equal to C A to the power Z, where C is the constant or the Y intercept and Z is the slope of the line. So what is this Y intercept and what is the slope of the line? We don't see them here, right? Well, that's because these concepts can be better explained when you draw this curve in the logarithmic format. If you think about it, area is such a huge number, right? If, if you're thinking about entire countries, entire continents, area is just a huge number. It's difficult to plot the species richness in terms of kilometer square in the arithmetic scale, which is why it's always better to use the logarithmic scale for both the number of species, the species richness and the area. So if we were to convert this equation into the logarithmic scale, then the curve would actually become a straight line. Let's come back to this equation. And if we are going to apply log on this equation, then it becomes log S is equal to log C plus Z log A because this is a multiplication and there is a power function here. This will be addition log C plus Z will come before log. So that becomes Z log A. 
Okay, so this is the equation, the logarithmic equation for the species area relationship where again S denotes the species richness, C is the y-intercept. Now we have the concept of y-intercept and Z is the slope of the line. So why have I written this equation here? Y is equal to mx plus C. You might be quite familiar with this equation. From here only we can see that C denotes the y-intercept because in this equation y is equal to mx plus C, m is the slope of the line and C is the y-intercept, right? Which makes this the y-intercept and this the slope of the line. So when we talk about species area relationships, one thing that we need to remember is that area can never be zero. If you're thinking about, you know, surveying an area to see how many species there are, you always start with a certain amount of area, right? There can never be no area in which no species are living in. Something like that doesn't exist in reality. So when we have to plot in such a way that area is not zero, so we're starting with one kilometer square or something like that, your straight line itself would start like this. So this gives the already existing richness in that one kilometer square of area, which is what is the y-intercept for us. And of course, you know how to calculate the slope of the line. You take the y values and you divide with the x values. That's how you get the slope of the line, which is z, which is also known as the regression coefficient. So let's talk more about this slope of the line z or the regression coefficient. These are two species area relationships in the logarithmic scale for the tropics and the arctic ecosystems. Now, you might be familiar with the fact that the tropics are more species rich compared to, you know, ecosystems like the poles. It just makes sense, right? The environment in the tropics is much more friendlier than the environment in the poles. So it makes sense for there to be more rich number of species in the tropics compared to the arctics. So what does this tell us? What do these two lines tell us? They essentially tell us that even in a small amount of area, the tropics are much more species rich compared to the arctic. Let's say you're talking about this area. But in this area itself, if you see the y value for the tropic line, it's much higher compared to the y value or the y intercept for the arctic line. This itself tells us that the tropics are much more species rich than the arctic. So if that's the case, if an ecosystem or if an area is much more species rich, then that is going to have a more steep line in the logarithmic scale compared to an area that is less species rich. So that's going to have a less steep line in the logarithmic scale. So this is all about the species area relationship. The equation that you need to remember is log S is equal to log C plus Z log A, where S is the species richness, C is the Y intercept, Z is the slope of the line and A is the area. Now, of course, this is in the logarithmic scale. In the arithmetic scale, the equation is S is equal to C A to the power Z. So we've talked quite some time about the species area relationship. You might be wondering why does this even exist? Is there a practical application for the species area relationship? Well, the answer to that is yes. So let's talk about some applications of species area relationships. One is that they can be used to predict if a species will become extinct due to habitat loss. So the graph is between species richness and area, right? So as the area is increasing, how is the species richness increasing? That's the entire graph. But we can reverse this and extrapolate data from that. What would happen if area were to decrease, which is what is happening due to habitat loss, like deforestation or dumping of garbage in landfills that is decreasing the habitat for a lot of species on Earth. So what would happen to the species richness if habitat were to decrease? If there was habitat loss due to human activities, which of the species would become extinct or which would become endangered? Those predictions can be made using the species area relationships. Another important application of this species area relationship graph is to identify biodiversity hotspots and the converse of these which are known as cold spots so that the biodiversity can be conserved. Biodiversity hotspots are places that are extremely species rich. They have a very steep graph in the logarithmic scale compared to cold spots which have a much less 
steep slope in the logarithmic scale. So if we identify the hot spots and the cold spots, then government agencies and other you know conservation agencies would know where to focus on, where to focus their conservation efforts to make sure that the species richness does not decrease, to make sure that the species do not become endangered or extinct. By identifying the biodiversity hotspots, using this information, national parks, nature reserves and other conservation mechanisms can be devised and implemented to conserve biodiversity. So if we identify a biodiversity hotspot, we can make it a no poaching zone or a no deforestation zone. Central governments and state governments can enforce laws banning hunting or cutting of trees from that area, all done in an effort to conserve the biodiversity in the area. So these are some of the applications of species area relationships. We'll end the video right here. And in future videos, we we'll talk more about the loss of biodiversity and what are the efforts that are being done to conserve biodiversity.